Hello, my loves. Welcome to another episode of the Becoming You podcast. I'm so excited today to be talking to you about what I am calling the Grounded Parent. Now, this is a brand new program that I have created and I am moving away from for right now, for well, a short term, um, focusing on being a general life coach to South Asian women and niching down a little bit, which I have been met with a lot of resistance internally, mentally, to making this shift just for the short term. Um, but I'm very excited to be creating this program, especially for you guys. And the reason that I've created the Grounded Parent Movement is because I've noticed that the more I work on myself, the better parent I become. And it's been a phenomenon that it surprised me because, you know, when I first started out on this journey, um, I knew I wanted more out of my life. And I'd read a lot of self-development books by that time that said, if you want to change your life, it really, the work starts with you. And, you know, we tend to compartmentalize our lives and we think I need to work on my marriage and I need to work on my health and I need to work on my parenting and I need to work on this and that. And yes, these parts of our life, you know, seem separate and seem siloed. But what I realized is that every aspect of your life is stems from you. You are the common variable, right? Um, in your life. So when it comes to your health, you are the common link. When it comes to your marriage, you are the common link. When it comes to your kids, you're the common link, right? When it comes to your relationships and if there's always a pattern of your relationships not going well, you are the common link. So by working on yourself, um, every part of your life tends to benefit. And in my own personal life, I've noticed that my parenting especially um, has just become stronger. I felt more connected to my kids. And, you know, they're, one of them is a tween, almost a teenager. And another one is entering the tween phase. And the challenges that you face as a parent when they're toddlers um, versus now is so different. The challenges that they face in elementary school and middle school is very challenging and the times are very different to how we grew up and how they're growing up with access to technology and social media and all the questions that come with what is the right boundaries for our family. And I feel like the problems that they face are much more complex. The questions they ask are much smarter than the ones that we used to ask, the types of books they read, especially my teenager. Um, he is so intellectual and the types of questions he comes to me with are really nuanced and subtle and have many, many layers to it. So what I realized is that the more I work on myself and what I mean by that is getting clear on who I am, what my values are and how I tend to find my own answers. I don't want somebody to tell me the answers, right? I want to find my own answers. And so I'm able to help him in that way. So the Grounded Parent was created as a result of me helping myself feel more connected to my children and working with many, many, many clients over the last six years on themselves and then seeing the side benefits of how much closer they feel to their own children at the end of our work together. So this is not something brand, brand new that I'm creating. It is it is a natural evolution of the work that I have been doing for the last six years. And one of the main problems that all my clients come to me with is I wish I could be more present with my child, right? They all struggle with being present. They all struggle with being patient with them. And they all feel really, really bad um, when they tend to lose their temper with their children when they don't mean to, but the stress of work and the stress of life tends to get to them. Or they find themselves like trying to always shape their kids into someone who they think they ought to be. And inadvertently, they feel distant from their children because they're constantly telling them, you need to do this and you need to do that. And they find that it has the opposite effect of what they want them to do. So for instance, I had 
a client who, you know, whose child was struggling in school. They were not interested in the academics, but they were super interested in a niche hobby, right? This child was really interested in a niche hobby. And when we started on our coaching sessions, she'd be like, I don't know where this hobby is going to go, but he's like obsessed with this hobby. And I would say that's a gift of his and our job as parents. Yes. Even though this hobby might not be in line or an expectation with how you want your child to be, that is the intuitive gift that he has. Right. That's a passion he's exhibiting right now. And our job as parents is to guide them, to nurture them, to explore that passion, that desire. And so when she shifted her mindset around what this hobby meant, it really allowed her to open up and create space for him to be himself, which then brought them closer. And it was a point of connection for them. He felt seen by his mother, because now she was taking an interest in this hobby. She was taking a genuine interest instead of, um, what I would call a masked interest to try and change his mind to something else that she deemed more worthwhile. And so it really brought them closer. And because she now took a genuine interest, she started to see, wow, like he really does have a passion for this and a talent for it and his natural skills and abilities. As a leader, as a thought leader, as an out of the box thinker, like she started to see different aspects of his personality, which he hadn't seen before because of this hobby and it brought them closer. So this, so I want to explain more about who the eight week, there's an eight week program that I've created and who, but it's a one-on-one -on -one program. It is not a group program. And I really wanted to delve a little bit deeper on this podcast episode to talk to you guys more about it. This is for the parent who wants to connect with their child deeply on every level, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. This is for you. If you are ready to lay the groundwork for a long lasting emotional connection, trust, and intimacy with your children. And I love that word intimacy because intimacy says that we are connected on every level and I see you, I feel you, I accept you. So this is also for the parent. If you've been reading all the parenting books and you have tried your hardest or you are trying your hardest to apply the strategies that you are reading in these books, but you're not, you're unable to, and you find yourself maybe frustrated, disconnected, and just fighting with them, even though you're trying to apply these strategies and your parenting is having unintended results to maybe your child's self-confidence and their self-esteem. And then you end up feeling ashamed after about the type of parent you are. Maybe ashamed is a strong word, but you keep feeling like you're just not quite there yet, or you feel really bad, or you feel like you are maybe damaging them. Um, you feel like your parenting is having all the, all the results that you don't want it to have, right? You're trying really hard, but the results are not there. This is the program for you. And this program is really unique because most parenting, I believe, focuses on changing the child, right? They give you strategies on how to talk to them. Um, they give you gentle parenting techniques, et cetera. And that's all well and good. That's great. But my program is different because I don't focus on changing your child. I help focus on changing yourself, right? Instead of focus on changing your child to bridge the gap between the two of you, you focus on what needs to change within yourself so that you can feel closer to your child and create space and create the connection with them. And this is a whole lot easier to do than changing your child. Trust me, it, the hardest thing in the world is to try to change somebody else. Right? I'm sure you know that by now. Trying to change a child's behavior is one of the hardest, most frustrating things that you can venture on. And it leaves both of you feeling exhausted. Imagine if your husband worked on changing you every day or your spouse worked on changing you every single day, right? It doesn't make you feel closer. It doesn't make you feel wanted. 
It doesn't make you feel desired. It doesn't, it makes you, it ends up making you feel really not good enough, right? And the same thing happens to our children. I know it comes from a place of love. We want the best for them. We want to shape them into amazing human beings. And we give them what we think is constructive criticism all day long. But how they receive it is I'm not good enough. And you keep trying to tell me to change. And I don't know how to do it just right so that I can please you. Right. And that really affects their self-esteem and self-confidence. And it's exhausting as a parent to constantly give this constructive criticism all day long. It's not great. So that's why this Grounded Parent eight-week program is really unique because it, it works on changing yourself so that the changes that you desire to see in the relationship between you and your child happen very naturally and intuitively and you start to become the type of connected parent you want to become. So the next question might be, well, why is the focus on me and not on my child in this program? So the reason for this is that almost every parent, when they begin parenting, parent from a place of fear and they don't even know it. We do not parent from a place of love. And that might be really harsh to hear and a wake up call, but parenting from a place of fear looks like this. It's fear that I will mess up my child, fear that I don't know what I'm doing, right? Fear of, I don't know what I'm doing. So it might be like, stop crying, stop being so angry. It's not that big of a deal. It'll be fine. So you might find yourself saying things like that. Um, you live in fear that your child won't live up to their potential unless you do certain things. So it might be thoughts like, she's just not confident enough. He's not outgoing enough. He's not hardworking enough. She's too shy. Okay. Fear that your child will turn out nothing like you. Right. Um, like maybe you were a hard worker in school and you got great grades and you got accolades and everything. And if your child isn't showing that kind of results, then that might be a deep fear of like, oh my gosh, how are they going to turn out? Okay. Um, fear that their life won't turn out as good as you hope for it to. So things, thoughts like if you don't learn these skills now, you're never going to. And another thought might be, he's not working hard in school. He's going to fail at life, right? Or he's not working hard in school. How is that going to, how is that going to work when he enters his career or goes to college or he's not working or getting the type of grades he needs in school so that he can get into the type of colleges he needs. Um, you might be living in fear of time running out. So thoughts like, hurry up, come on, stop taking so long, or it might be she's falling behind right? These are just a handful of fears that run the program behind how we parent. None of us parent from the place of they're going to be great human citizens, right? Of the world. We don't parent from that place. When you believe, truly believe in every cell of your being that your kids are going to turn out to be great, Right. Not when they get those A's, not when they enter college, not when they enter a consulting job at McKinsey and Bain, right? Whatever that company is. The thought needs to happen now where you truly believe in every cell of your body that your child is going to turn out to be great. If you have that belief and you think my child is going to turn out to be great, the way you parent will completely change. The things that come out of your mouth will completely change. Your stress levels will completely change. The reason that you, you are stressed right now about parenting is because you're parenting from a place of fear, right? So these are all beliefs that I just read out that are currently running in the background, like a computer program, which impact how you show up as a parent. So parenting from fear creates disconnection. It creates really unproductive conflict. So conflict in itself is not a bad thing. But when you parent from a place of fear, it creates unproductive conflict, which means you're not getting results from the conflict, right? You end up, when you have conversations, the communication, there's a breakdown and you both end up feeling further away, then you feel more connected. It creates really difficult communication and tension in the relationship. And the harder you try, the worse it seems to get. So trust and connection is a two-way street. And if you want to repair the divide between you and your child, 
it actually starts with you and not with your child. It is impossible to change someone else. And the more you try to change them, the more defensive they get. In this instance, your child. Um, or in the case of your children, the less confident or more rebellious they become. So the only way to change your child is by learning to be present, healing your personal fears, right? Which has been caused by your own internal wounding and cultivating a really strong nervous system regulation. And we're going to go a little bit deeper on what that means. So I have found in my own life that there are what three, what I would call phases to how I personally became the grounded parent. And so obviously I'm going to replicate that with my own clients. So the first phase is called slow down. And what that really means is, you know, when you're not in the present moment with your children, what's really happening is you are parenting either from the past, which is usually your fears, or you are parenting from a projected future, which is your worries. So we're either thinking about, oh my gosh, this is what I did, or this is what I didn't do, and my life turned out this way. Or it could be something like triggers, right? Like where you are feeling really irate. Like, so one of my triggers is when my kids lie to me. And when I say I'm parenting from the past, it really, really triggers me because in my past, I saw my parents being lied to over and over and over again by close family members. And I saw my parents like feel betrayed. I saw them getting hurt because of these lies. So when I say I parent from the past, when I'm disciplining my child or I'm extremely upset and my reaction is disproportionate to maybe the lie that they've told or I'm, I'm parenting in a way that's now disconnecting me from them for their actions, right? Yes, lying should not be encouraged. I'm not saying simply accept their lie, but there are different ways to help them to see that lying is not a great attribute to their personality and why that is. We have, we can do that in a loving way. But what I was doing is I was parenting from a place of fear, of feeling betrayed, right? What I was really bringing in was my past and my wounds about seeing my parents get hurt and me as a child feeling powerless to seeing that. This is just one of the, the many, one of the, the multitude of things that contribute to our wounds and our fears. So, and I would also, in that example, I would also be parenting from fear because I would be worrying about what type of you know, child lies, like I must be doing something wrong. Like what if somebody else catches my kid lying and what would they think of him and me, et cetera. So what our children need is our complete presence in that moment, which is to focus on the actual thing that is happening, which is that they lied about something, right? And not bring our own baggage in into the parenting and not bring our projected worries about their life, like that they're going to become this like compulsive liar all the time, right? Not bring our projected worries into it. What we need to have the, the conversation that needs to happen is what made you want to lie? Like, why did you feel like you couldn't trust me enough to talk about this with me? Why do you feel so scared to tell the truth? That's the conversation that needs to happen, right? Like, why, why do you feel the need to hide it? So in order to parent really well, our children need a complete presence, our acceptance and love to help them through their struggles. And our children do not need us to give them all the answers. As parents, I think we think that I need to know everything and I need to tell them what to do. They don't need that. What they really need from us is to guide them to their own answers that are in line with who they are and what their truth is and not always what we want them to be. That I believe is one of the hardest things about parenting is to stop making our children who we want them to be and allow them to become who they need to be. And that takes presence, patience, and time. And if you don't feel good slowing down, you will struggle with this. In order to be a good parent, it takes, it takes, it requires us to slow down and in our fast paced life of just getting things done of our list and being productive and our focus being on how much can I get done in a day, 
we tend to put that same kind of pressure on our children and we try to rush them through things. We try to rush them through their emotions. We try to rush them through their to-do to lists. And our children are in a different timeline to us adults. So the first two weeks of this program are going to be focused on helping you declutter your mind and de-stress your life so you can learn to be more present with your children's emotions and who they are. So phase two is about healing your fears and your wounds. When you parent from fear, your children hide from you, right? Because they don't feel seen, heard, accepted, or loved for who they are in the present moment. When you parent from fear, what we tend to do is yell at them, nag at them, criticize them, tend to put them down in subtle ways and make them feel not good enough, right? And when we do that to anybody, that person will tend to hide their true selves from ourselves. And when somebody hides their true selves, then there's no real, that's not a true and genuine connection. And that's part of the reason why you might be feeling disconnected from your child. And as a parent, we might think of it as giving them constructive feedback and good parenting to shape them into like super successful, productive humans. But what our children hear and receive and feel is that who I am, I'm just not good enough. And I really need to change myself in order for my, for my mom and my dad to really get, for them to love me and accept me, right? Acceptance equals love for them. So in the grounded parent, what you're going to learn is how do you deeply accept your present self and your inner child so you can fully accept your child as they are. The reason we feel the need to criticize and change and chip away who our children are at their truest self is because we haven't done the work of fully accepting our own perfections and imperfections. We keep trying harder to be more perfect, right? Better. And so we do that to our children. I'm not saying there's anything bad about striving to be better, but there's a difference between striving to be better when you're working on accepting yourself. It's like trying to lose weight while hating your body as opposed to accepting your body the way it is and loving it into a better shape, right? A, you will see massive difference in results. And it's the same with parenting. When you parent your child, when you're doing the work of accepting yourself and accepting them, will create more transformative, faster, better, effective, speedier results than self-criticizing yourself and hating yourself into becoming a better person and doing the same to your child, right? And you cannot give your child self-acceptance if you're not willing to do that for yourself. You cannot teach your child to be in the present moment if you're not willing to be in the present moment yourself. So it's like you cannot teach your child to drive a car if you've never driven a car yourself and you don't know how to drive, right? You simply cannot teach your children to be more confident if you are not a super confident person yourself. But if you're teaching yourself self-confidence through sheer force and self-criticism, then you're going to be teaching your child to do that. And that's, that's not productive or sustainable and does not lead to self-confidence. So phase two is really about you learning to heal your triggers, your wounds, your insecurities, and your inner child so that you can truly learn to see and accept your child for who they actually are and not who you want them to be. And step three is about regulating your nervous system, or phase three, I should say. So our children are our biggest triggers because they're a constant presence and reminder of our deepest unhealed wounds. This is the reason why our children and our spouses get under our skin, because they're constant reminders of areas of our life that we need to work on. Anytime somebody triggers us, it's a moment of self-reflection to ask, my, ask yourself, what in me is feeling hurt and uncomfortable right now, right? Though, we love our kids deeply. They also inflame our fears, our insecurities, our judgment, and our anxiety. So you know you shouldn't react, right, to them, but you do. We absolutely do. We all lose it with our kids after a certain point. This is not because you lack willpower. It's because your body takes over your willpower in that moment, which you have little to no control over. You have not trained your body to have 
right? Right now, your body hijacks you. So that's because you haven't learned to regulate your nervous system. And that's, that means teaching your body how to feel safe, grounded, and peaceful, no matter what's going on externally. Now, that is a learned and practiced skill that's essential to you feeling at peace and to your relationship with your child. How do I cultivate an internal world within me where even if my child might be throwing a tantrum, I still stay grounded and peaceful and calm so that I can help my child so that it stops becoming about me and how they are hurting me and how they're inconveniencing my life. And I stop trying to over explain things, right? Because in that moment, when your child is throwing a temper tantrum, guess what? Their nervous system is completely out of whack, right? They're not listening to logic or rationale, which is why when you try to explain to your kids when they're having a meltdown or they're being unreasonable, logic does not seem to get through to them. It's not because they're not listening. It's because they literally cannot listen to you because listening is a mental aptitude, right? But their body is feeling fear in that moment. Their, their bodies might be feeling rejection. Their bodies might be feeling stressed and anxious. And so their nervous system is out of whack. And with children who are not fully yet developed, so this doesn't happen until well after their teenage years, our children regulate their nervous system by absorbing what's going on in our nervous system. Right. So if they are jacked up, having a meltdown, stressed out, anxious, you trying to use your words is not going to help. But if your body is calm and your breath is regulated and you keep coming back to your own centeredness, eventually that's going to rub off on your child. So your child takes his or her cues from you and their nervous system and it absorbs your regulation or your dysregulation. So if you're both dysregulated, you're going to keep each other dysregulated. But adults, we have our ability to go from a dysregulated state to a regulated state. We have that ability, whereas kids don't. They literally do not have that ability yet. The only way they can regulate their system is off of yours. So the calmer you remain, the faster your child was, will escalate down, which I know you know on a cognitive level, but your d body doesn't know how to do that yet, right? So every session in all the eight sessions that you have in The Grounded Parent, we're going to intertwine the coaching with a powerful breathwork session so that we can help your mind and your body transform which is the key to making sustainable, real change when it comes to parenting. So remember, phase one is learning to slow down your life, your thoughts. Phase two is about healing your fe fears, your triggers, your insecurities, and healing your wounded inner child so that you can learn to accept, love, see your true like child, right? Not the one you're trying to shape them into, but seeing the real genuine them. And phase three is learning to regulate your nervous system. So in the eight weeks, you get six one-on-one -on -one sessions, each lasting between 60 and 90 minutes. And you get coaching and breast work in each session. You also will get six video teaching modules to accompany every one of these six sessions. You get eight weeks of total support via an app called Voxer, which is you get to communicate with me one-on-one -on -one between our sessions. And you get a video library of pre-recorded breastwork videos so that you can develop a daily practice. I'm a big believer that daily breastwork compounds results. It's like brushing teeth. Nobody brushes teeth once a week. And for some reason, you know, people might do meditation or breastwork once a week and then wonder, why didn't I get results? So they might do breastwork one time and be like, I didn't see any results. And I always compare it to brushing teeth. And I say, you don't brush your teeth one time and wonder why it's not clean. You got to do it twice a day, every day, right? And then you end up with clean teeth for the rest of your life. And so breastwork is the same. But, you know, in our coaching sessions, we go much deeper into the breastwork sessions and they are 30 to 40 minute breastwork sessions. 
but you'll also get access to a library of breastwork sessions that are five to 10 minutes long, which can be done in addition to the deeper sessions, or they can just be done maybe once or twice a day, just like brushing teeth. And you also get access to a 21 day digital course called Healing Your Inner Child, which again will compound your results when it comes to this program. And so if you're interested in this program, we, we are going to be enrolling very soon. So on the lead up to this paid program, I also have a five day breathwork series that I'm offering starting April 15th. So this episode will come out April 11th, which is in a couple of days for me. And so April 15th, if you're interested in the free breathwork series, sign up for that. The link is in the show notes and also in the email that you would have received, um, introducing you to this particular podcast episode. And then after the email series is done, the doors to the grounded parent open. And if you're really interested in this, the bonus is if you sign up before the end of April, you get access to the 21 day course on healing your inner child as an added bonus for joining this program as an early adopter. And the total investment for this program that lasts eight weeks is $2,500. And if you're interested in payment plans, just let me know. I am more than happy to create that for you. But right now, the only option I have is a pay in full for this eight week program. All right, I cannot wait to see which one of you is gonna take me up on this incredible, incredible offer. And I know that this is going to transform your relationship, not only with your child, but most importantly, the one that you have with yourself, because that will change your entire life. All right, I love you guys so much. Take care and I'll see you soon.